hello dear friends welcome back to my youtube channel mukesh english in this video i'm going to talk about the famous work of purna chandra tejasvi titled karwalo karwalo is a novel written by purna chandra tejasvi the famous kannada writer whose works include novels short stories non fiction and poetry in this video i'm going to summarize the translated version from kannada to english by d a shankar and i have tried to summarize the whole novel which is translated from kannada to english by d a shankar so let's begin it uh, let's know briefly about the novel karwalo the story of karwalo is an incident that takes place in a corner of a village in malnad region a surprising story of a scientist karwalo becoming a chronologist by mixing with mandana prabhakara yankata kariyappa and the other characters from the village this work is completely different from all other kannada novels which asserts that the science is the path to realization like religion meditation and penance the novel has also has so far written or seen 12 editions in kannada and has been published in english hindi marathi malayalam and japanese languages now let's know about the major characters in this novel karwalo so the first major character is here karwalo itself karwalo is a great botanist scientist entomologist then we have two important characters mandana and lakshmana they work in a bee cooperative society they are the bee keepers ramaya ramaya is the father in law of mandana prabhakara is a radio mechanic in chikmangalore he is also photographer for karwalo uh, cyril gonzalves is a lawyer yankata is a snake catcher as well as a tree climber kariyappa biryani who cooks biryani who is a cook and as well as a tree climber pyara is a muslim boy and a kitchen assistant in the narrator's house kiwi is a white spaniel or we can also say he is a narrator's dog and the narrator himself is one of the prime characters in the novel titled karwalo so let's begin the novel now narrator's visit to the b cooperative society the novella opens with the narrator's going to mudigere b cooperative society the rainy season had set in for for quite some time in malnad so the narrator would like to buy some honey for his father for 70 rupees means to say seven bottles for each for 10 rupees so he wants to buy 10 bottles of honey for his father so he has gone to the bee cooperative society and the honey is considered to be more cheaper here than mysore at bee cooperative society the narrator meets the two bee keepers named mandana and lakshmana Lakshmana he identifies the narrator as he thinks that the narrator belongs to the film world and he introduces he introduced uh, Mandana he introduced narrator to Mandana then Mandana differentiated the bottled honey and machine extracted honey the narrator bought purchased a pot of honey from Gutti area for rupees 78 while returning home his jeep broke down broke down due to no petrol there was no petrol in his jeep so then two young men helped him by bringing a can of petrol and here the honey is kept in the jeep which is caught by the group of honey group of bees so the narrator had to wait till the darkness to descend then after returning home he examined the honey which looked white in color and similar to like coconut oil he was disappointed by it about its color and thought that he was perhaps cheated next day he went to the cooperative society to clarify his doubt he was happy to learn that the honey from gutti area is one of the best quality and he has also paid the remaining 8 rupees because he had only 70 rupees that time when he purchased honey so now mandana came to see the narrator and he requested him to write an application 
to appoint Mandana as the key as the beekeeper of the society, so that he would submit this application to the minister, who was also the chairman of the Khadi board. As the minister was about to visit Mudigere Taluk, when Mandana was asked why he could not find any other person to write the application in his place, Mandana said that his guru Karwalo was an officer at the Paddy Research Center. He had to leave Bombay to visit his daughter who was not keeping well. The narrator could not believe Mandana's acquaintance with Karwalo who was a great botanist and an entomologist of the great renown. Mandana declared if he gets his, this job, he would definitely get married. Now, minister's address on 15th August and B's attack. So Mandana could not give his application, his petition for the job to the minister in person because when he came to know that the minister's address was scheduled in the vast open ground in Mudigere on 15th August occasion, he decided to go there and took part in the scout movement group. The scout group was carrying with drums, bugles, cymbals. After the unfurling of the flag, Mandana and his scout friends blew the bugles and beat the drums and crushed the cymbals. The walls and the windows of the taluk office shook under the great impact of the terrible noise he was creating. The hills and the forest around echoed and sent back the waves of the reverberating noise. The murderous commotion disturbed the humble bees in the hives at the taluk office and they got angry, buzzed and flew around. Everybody was attacked by the bees and the whole program was disturbed. People ran, helter and skelter here and there and Mandana could not submit his application to the minister. Then, narrator's first meeting with Karwalo. Narrator went to see Karwalo for the first time and here he discussed the problem of paste which were eating up his standing paddy crop. Professor Karwalo listened to him patiently and suggested the narrator to bring a few samples, few specimens and told him to drain away the water from the fields. Possibly these paste live to the stem and under the water, therefore the insecticides had been of little use. And he also told that they must be army worms. The narrator was impressed by the physical appearance of Karwalo, who had moustache and beard which gone grey and aquiline nose, solemn looking eyes. He looked very impressive and dignified. He was about 40 years old and looked like a Christian from Mangalore. The way he used to speak Kannada was formal and correct. He was a man of repute in the town. So Karwalo's prediction was right. The paste had taken shelter near the stem under the water. The water was drained away. They dropped off and began to crawl on the wet earth. Then the birds and the frogs and the ants made a feast of them. The remaining ones were sprayed with, in with insecticides and destroyed. But by then they had eaten many more than half the crop. Karwalo was happy to know the result of his experiment. Then Karwalo told Mandana, who was his disciple and the narrator, also, Karol told about his Mandana, about Mandana, that how he is his disciple. And the narrator also shared the bees incident of 15th August occasion. Then, Mandana's meeting with narrator the next day. The next day, the narrator saw Mandana with a gunny bag on his shoulder. It was very heavy. A reddish liquid was coming down, falling down his back from it. It was the number one A1 quality pork which was also used to supply to Karwalo. The narrator gave him money, then understood how Mandana was so dear to Karwalo. Then narrator's decision to sell his land. The first reason the narrator was not getting any profit from his agriculture 
so he decided to sell his land the reason is he was not getting any profit from his agriculture it was very difficult for him to pay the loans and the another reason was the brooding enveloping silence of mallard as the squalor and the noise of the town bored him so loneliness rural poverty monotony were getting on his nerves to get out of his despondency he thought he had no alternative but to sell away the land and get out of the place once and for all then he continued his discussion with the estate agent now kiwi the narrator's dog so in this novella the non human beings also play an important role for example narrator's dog kiwi is an interesting companion so here tejasvi's photographic and microscopic observation of the animal behavior is displayed kiwi with its extraordinarily ordinary olfactory organ olfactory organ means to say the smell power it helped the narrator in many ways when the narrator was discussing the possible sale of his land to a buyer pyara told him that kiwi was absconding he is not seen the narrator and pyara went in search of the dog in the nearby forest by wading through the thick shrubbery finally they found out the dog barking at an adhan pot which was full of bees thus kiwi helped them to have the interesting experiences then we find here narrator's meeting with karwalo on his way to modigere so one day the narrator was on his way to modigere and he met karwalo the narrator spoke about the adhan pot face down in the forest obviously which was used to distill the liquor liquor and bees had already built a hive there he thought of asking mandana to put them into a bee box then karwalo took the narrator to his laboratory and he spoke about a glue worm spotted by mandana which was found by mandana it feeds on conch shell worms and there are two lights in its tail karwalo said that mandana had kept some bees which were constantly affected or plagued by these worms the narrator was surprised to hear that there were insects which could bother the bees also according to karwalo mandana studied the habits of these worms later a rainy season had ended and they could not catch any of these worms then karwalo touched the worm with a stick and immediately in the vicinity of the tail two lamps luminous with blue light glowed into life so the tail was lightning karwalo told the narrator that next time he would explain how those two lamps glow and emit light without any heat so now experiment with the adhan pot which was found in the jungle by mandana so one day when the narrator was returning from mudigere he saw karwalo and mandana walking down a road bit running between the green fields glittering in the bright young sunlight the narrator observed that mandana had told karwalo what he had seen in the forest was not an ordinary pot used for distillation of liquor but it was a way of tending bees building bees in malnad region karwalo would like to see this and for that reason he was walking down with mandana pyara and kiwi were leading them finally they reached near the pot the narrator stood a little away from the pot pyara mandana karwalo they were very close to the pot mandana slowly lifted the pot up as the pot shook the bees made a hissing sound the bees attacked them the narrator controlled himself and slowly moved away karwalo bravely stood his ground mandana raised the pot blew over it the bees the snake like hissed and came out orange colored honeycomb like sheets of beaten gold shone at the bottom mandana putting the pot back in its place said that 
honey should be collected first and one honeycomb should be left out why because the bees would come back and once they start breeding then they would be put in the bee box so mandana took the knife and scraped out with honeycomb and one more thing that he also karwalo also said that all these years we were under the impression that the beekeeping in a scientific way was our in invention but the pot breeding says that it's really an ancient way and this method should be popularized then there is a absolute need of mandana but he did not turn up how one day mandana's presence became very much necessity a very much need for the narrator thousands of bees circled around the firewood in the lumber room pyara had thrown a bro broken water jug face down the bees were circling orbiting it some were going in and some were coming out then the entire swarm of the bees in one moment vanished into the jug now there was a necessity to put them in the bee box and this task could be done only by whom by the expert mandana but mandana was not there so the what narrator has done the narrator asked norve ramaya to find out mandana but he denied because ramaya did not want mandana to marry his daughter now it's very difficult to get the firewood because there was the possibility of the jug falling off somehow the narrator decided to carefully carry the jug and leave it in the forest so late in night pyara and the narrator took it and put it beyond the hedge of the farmland the morning presented him with a fresh problem the bees which had gone to collect honey came back and not finding the jug which create a pandemonium even they try to restore the jug in its into its original place it did not solve the problem the bees started to fight among them they wrestled quarreled and finally they fell down dead thousands of bees had fallen dead in the battle the narrator cursed mandana who did not turn up when he wanted him most now mandana is linking everything and everybody with his marriage so one day the narrator saw mandana unexpectedly and told his need to help him from the bees further mandana expressed his his desire to get married for that the narrator asked mandana for that for that mandana asked karwalo for the post of an attender but karwalo denied mandana accused karwalo of helping his own caste man for the post this post to get married he needed that job even the narrator also consoled him and assured him that he would talk to ramaya now there is a new entry here one day when the narrator was watering the paddy fields a stranger came his name was prabhakar a radio mechanic in chikmangalore he was right now a student of karwalo working as a photographer enlarging slides films etc he had also set up a lab in the part of the research center itself he had come in search of mandana as karwalo wanted to meet him prabhakara and the narrator they set they discussed the ways of solving mandana's problem then they also sent people to fetch about to fetch norway ramaya now the most important part is here mandana's wedding so in mandana's life emotional and the economic problems were interrelated norway ramaya refused to give his daughter in marriage to mandana on account of his joblessness mandana had no permanent job and he was worried he refused to meet karwalo because karwalo did not give him a job of an attender in his office so therefore mandana requested the narrator to put in a word to ramaya in his favor but mandana can get a job only if he gets married therefore the narrator requested karwalo 
to give a job to mandana in his research center but karwalo expressed his inability to do so but he spoke to norway ramaya to give his daughter in marriage to mandana karwalo told if he gets married he may have he may behave little more responsibly finally mandana's wedding with rami ramaya's daughter takes place prabhakar the photographer who is the in charge to take the photos in this wedding narrator and karwalo attend the wedding lakshmana becomes the father of the bridegroom and he takes the full in charge the narrator and karwalo are pleased to see that mandana had settled down happily in his life after his marriage so now mandana brings b box so 3 days after the marriage of mandana mandana came to narrator's place with seven boxes loaded on a bullock cart he had collected the discarded broken dust laden boxes from the various people repaired them cleaned them and they preferred the new one with the with the smell of varnish to which the bees never took mandana charged 6 or 7 rupees per box some 46 rupees totally so he charged about 46 rupees totally pyara and mandana took his torch and a longi to wrap around the bo- bee box they returned after some time pyara carrying the pot the pot mandana had put the pot bees into a bee box and he had kept the other box boxes in the cool shady place saying the bees would come on their own and build hives in them pyara had kept some two or three boxes in places chosen chosen by himself and had made a bet with mandana that the bees would come come in his boxes first but in afternoon the narrator went there with pyara kiwi and his little daughter he did not find even single bee flying anywhere near the box the narrator scolded pyara why he had lifted the lid of the box now the narrator's dog kiwi got infected how while returning they found kiwi was making some strange painful sounds and ran as if possessed something the narrator recalled that the previous morning there was a foul smell in the house it was found that the smell was coming from the cot where obviously kiwi had hidden a big piece of bone with rotten flesh still sticking to it the bone looked like that of a cow or a, or an ox or no mortal could bear the smell kiwi had treasured it to chew it at leisure unseen they may have caused some infection now mandana is beaten up by police how when the narrator was trying to find the cause of kiwi's illness one of women worker reported that the police had raided the police had raided norway ramaya's house and they had beaten up mandana mercilessly during the raid police didn't get anything except the kasari ke blossom honey which had an unusual smell now kiwi who is not keeping well when the narrator reached home he found that his wife his daughter and pyara anxiously looking at kiwi kiwi was lying on the floor as if dead his limbs gone up stiff then the narrator decided to take to take kiwi to mudigere hospital the next day even the next day kiwi was in half conscious state and would not allow anyone to go near him then he was taken to mudigere hospital and after tracing kiwi's illness there was some stomach ailment and the doctor prescribed some medicines now mandana is arrested by the police then the narrator went to town to buy medicines on his way to the chemist he saw lakshmana and lakshmana informed him that the police had arrested mandana and put him in the lock up they raided norway ramaya's house they had heard of illicit distillation of liquor they took away mandana's honey pot saying it contained country liquor 
now mandana was bailed out how mandana was bailed out how he got the bail then the narrator to and lakshmana went to police station they tried to convince the police in between the narrator could not get the medicines of the same brand prescribed by the doctor so he sent pyara to find pyara to doctor to find out whether these drugs would be all right here lakshmana came running and much agitated he reported that mandana will be shifted to chikmangalur jail jail and for trafficking illicit liquor and the fine would be rupees 500 and one year imprisonment then finally the narrator gave surety for mandana and bailed him out kivi also recovered slowly now the court summons mandana one morning a constable dressed in khaki came to came to the narrator's house with a court summon for mandana according to this mandana should appear in the court next monday here a chettiar from madras was interested to buy the narrator's property and for this he should go to bangalore to meet him but now this mandana has spiked off means to say now in between the mandana's issues has come up the narrator blamed lakshmana for lending him in the great trouble because indirectly it was a summon for the narrator also if mandana did not appear to the court so lakshmana assured that he would find mandana now the narrator describes karwalo narrator describes here narrator describes mandana's police case to whom to karwalo so on his way back the narrator met the, the narrator met karwalo and he described how mandana was beaten up by the police he stated that while honeymooning at his father in law Mandana was making country liquor. The police smelled it. He, they raided the house. They saw what Mandana had had kept in a honey pot, and it smelled very awful. The police gave him a good beating. Then he admitted it was his pot. They had put him in the lockup and filed a case against him. So narrator also bailed him out. Mandana told the narrator that he had kept some half a pot of honey. but it it had gone sore and he wanted to throw it away but his brother in law laughed at him said that it could be made to an excellent country liquor he must have compiled that was the truth told by mandana to the narrator the police filed a case and the court had issued the summon if the case stands he would be fined rupees 600 and a jail for a year that was the information given by Man- given by Kar- mandana to whom given by the narrator to karwalo now there now karwalo appoints a criminal lawyer karwalo appointed a criminal lawyer to fight the case of mandana as directed by karwalo the narrator met the criminal lawyer cyril gonzalves and he explained the case of mandana the narrator karwalo and others attended the magistrate the magistrate's court in the court the public prosecutor argued that whatever the pot contained it was indisput it was indisputably base material for the manufacture of liquor even gonzalves the lawyer appeared to be in a very tight spot there he asked the prosecutor if he would agree that what was originally in the pot was honey he said it could be and that was enough for gonzalves he argued that the cost of a bottle of liquor was 60 paisa whereas the cost of honey bottle was rupees 10 no sensible man would want to lose 10 rupees on every bottle of liquor he made hence lawyer gonzalves intelligently won the case in the favor of mandana so now let's begin this mysterious mission karwalo went away with mandana for a whole week to get these rest glow worms he said every insect is an every insect is an avatar of god 
so he given he he has given a hint here that some sort of adventure is coming up so carvalho describes his visit to norway with mandana before two weeks carvalho visited norway jungle along with mandana he wanted to see two two things one is the glow worm which he had already shown to the narrator in the laboratory the other thing he wanted to see the flying lizard mandana had reported carvalho that he had seen the flying lizard around norway jungle according to mandana's description carvalho started to draw the picture of flying lizard speaking about mandana carvalho says mandana is a born naturalist he is the better in the art of observation nothing he has observed so far he has gone wrong he is an extraordinary natural scientist that was the reason that carvalho never agreed the peon post for mandana that's why he never wanted mandana to become a tender now carvalho describes a drawing of flying lizard holding the drawing carvalho says the inner structure of this flying lizard is very different its nearest relative that we know of the lives in new zealand and is called towatara but it remained as a land animal lived of the land therefore it developed no wings carvalho carvalho further comments that our chameleon a chameleon has two thing wings with the help of which it can float in the air reach some height and then jump from one tree to another tree it but this flying lizard cannot it cannot fly uh, like birds because it doesn't it cannot uh, it cannot beat its wings mandana had already given an account of it the wings drawn are the imagination of carvalho mandana saw the wings when it was in flight but could see nothing when it perched on the tree he doesn't know whether the wings are like those of a bird of a bat or flying squirrel further carvalho says says here the chameleon of this kind belongs to the uh, ancient age prior to the like a uh, prehistory then then some more description about flying lizard by carvalho uh, speaking about its past carvalho says that officially flying lizard are declared extinct but in 1817 a padre a padre is supposed to see this in the african jungle he was stunned when carmen mandana spoke of the flying lizard his correspondence with professor uh, jakovsky and other american friends proves beyond doubt that the flying lizard is an ambassador of the ancient period prior to the prehistory carvalho talked for a long time on geological ages evolution floods snow ages etc he was trying to simplify it for all carvalho th- carvalho's thoughts were beyond the time and space now the narrator understood why carvalho showed so much concern for mandana why he did not want him to be imprisoned now the adventure has to begin the the expedition has to begin and funding is required so carvalho's correspondence had already evoked some interest so the smith so, smithsonian institute the geological society the british ecology geological unit they had come forward to help to begin this expedition and they helped around 70000 pounds sterling sterling carvalho was uncertain whether to accept it or not to accept now the preparation for this adventure to find this flying lizard so carvalho he somehow he gathered a big map of norway which is stretched from shiradi ghat to charmadi ghat mandana brought a man named biryani kariyappa 
whose job is to prepare biryani he was also a born climber of trees with the help of maps and graphs karwalo was thinking to start the trek from one end of the shirdi ghat and reaching chikmanglu forest and the bangalore mangalore highway he was sure that they could spot the flying lizard somewhere between the two points prabhakar had collected an electrical flash a tele camera a 16 mm movie camera and the various sets of lenses kariyappa picked up a sword and the double barreled gun the narrator's topless jeep became an, became an object of humor for everybody karwalo and prabhakara were still discussing navigators chronometers and compass almometers etc so they all decided to reach first darbar pet by bus then walk the distance to norway mandana borrowed a bullock cart from a petty shopkeeper which could be used to transport and carry things across marshy areas in forest so now the adventure the expedition to flying to find the flying lizard begins here norway which is situated in the middle of malnad far above the sea level which displayed a very unusual strange flora the forest was dense but not continuous the palm tree stretch was terribly wide the next morning they yoked the bullocks and they left kariyappa sat in the driver seat mandana in the narrator and karwalo they walked beside the cart the stretch of the palm trees were endless kariyappa drove the cart and the bullocks moved the on the trackless field now they had already moved quite far into the forest kiwi walked under the cart smelling every tree stump but for the vastness of the palm forest everything looked quite pleasant suddenly a wild sheep sprang forward and hit itself among the leaves mandana encouraged kiwi to to chase the sheep which was not liked by the narrator the narrator was afraid if kiwi got lost in the jungle then kariyappa stopped the cart and they all waited for kiwi finally kiwi was located by the narrator it was examined that his tongue was hanging and he was breathing hard a thorn a thorn had pierced through his ear and blood was trickling down kiwi screamed in pain when the thorn was removed removed after removing after moving some distance further they found that they were lost all around them were endless palm trees stretching mile after mile now the flying lizard in search of the flying lizard they were all moving for a place which was not known to any one of them their attempt to understand the great mystery of the evolution of life in terms of carvalo carvalo's awareness of time had rocketed them into a spiritual state now prabhakar's preparation then carvalo told prabhakar to set up chronometer and compass and they will try to find out the exact direction after a while prabhakar asked kariyappa to drive in a direction opposite to the one in which they had stationed the cart the narrator suspected that they were going back but carvalo believed the direction given by the machines of prabhakar now in between in between we find here prabhakar with the help of his instruments was making sure that they were going in the right direction the cart moved mile after mile and the palm trees looked endless it was sunny and there was not any shady spot nearby then they stopped at cool place drank water to quench their intolerable thirst now here the narrator lost his interest in the expedition why he started to think of his wife his daughter and he became nostalgic kiwi was the only link that remained with him at the moment from the world of memories then carvalo spoke about the huge dinosaurs and reptiles now the palm trees ended 
the narrator had slept for a long time when he woke up he saw the palm fields had ended and they were near the dense jungles mountain ranges just like the blue walls towered the over them the narrator tried to look through the binoculars before they would be gobbled up by the descending darkness they camped they had a camp there only that night the pula the bullocks were unyoked kariyappa cooked the field cooked, cooked the meal kariyappa cooked the meal then they sat around the fire and listened to karwalo's experiences in strange far off lands then slowly everybody slept now they entered the forest and this is a first in the forest the next morning they yoked the bullocks and began the journey since none of them felt like walking under the wet palm palm fronds they all got into the cart at last they entered the forest the trunks of the huge trees greeted them like big unscalable walls they were impressed by the accuracy of prabhakara's instruments the road was not in good condition the moment they entered the for the forest the moment they entered the forest karwalo's soul soared and his enthusiasm knew no bounds he was very happy hundreds of varieties of orchids ferns wild flowers creepers and the moss made them dumb they were speechless now in this forest at the beginning of the forest they saw number of lizards chameleons and the skunks the narrator asked mandana how on earth we find the creature we are looking for the narrator witnessed a big brightly colored chameleon sitting on a small branch and swinging itself the trees were tall and stood erect like huge walking sticks their trunks were covered with green mosses moss some of which hung down like honeycombs prabhakara was told to capture everything in his camera mandana showed them a variety of mushrooms also now karwalo says about those earthworms then karwalo pointed at a dry and thorny plant he picked up a twig and touched the plant with it the thorny plant became an insect grew hands and legs and walked off to another tree he showed us earthworms going up all trees and the ferns which grew on the trees collected dust from the winds and grew in a special kind of soil and these worms were going to live there now on the way they wanted to return before it got too dark and started hurrying to the camp on the way they saw a small pond the water in it was as clear as crystal and the rays of the western sun played on its motionless bosom suddenly a ball of a fire sprang up from the depth and flew it was a kingfisher it was a kingfisher flapping its wings it stood posed in space then swooped down on an invisible fish playing in the water prabhakar was very busy in adjusting the camera by the time the kingfisher disappeared and the narrator got angry now kariyappa started to shoot something with his rifle when all had gone hardly 10 steps they heard karwalo shouting karwalo shouted why karwalo shouted at kariyappa because he saw kariyappa taking aim with his rifle karwalo was about to bring down the horn bill the horn bill in the tree the female of the horn bill builds a nest in the hollow of a tree then they lay eggs when it sit over the eggs to hatch them the male weaves a strong net around the nest so strong that no other bird can get in as as there is a smell there is a small opening enough for the female bird to thrust its beak up if the male is killed the female have to starve to death that was the reason karwalo shouted but no harm done as kariyappa happily missed it 
this incident developed a fresh admiration for Carvalho and Carvalho was full of familial concern for the bird. Now, the second day in the forest. So there's no clue. Still, there's no clue about the flying lizard. The day after they went into the forest, nothing much happened. They found no clue whatever to the flying lizard, whereabouts of the flying lizard. Caravallo said that the lizards and the like normally quenched the thirst by licking up the dew. Therefore, it was useless to wait near the water pools. Now, the two new characters joined here. The next morning, two more char characters joined them in their pastoral drama. They were Yankita and his wife. Yankita was an excellent snake, cha and snake catcher. He came to collect the skins of mongoose and otter and snakes. He said that there was not enough money in snake catching and or medicines. So an otter skin fetches him around 100 rupees and the snake skin gives him only 13. So that could help him to buy the new clothes, etc. So the so Yankita was also taxi dumbest of sorts and he was also seen selling suff, selling suffied sorry stuffed foxes and mangoes. So Yankita had come there to look for the cow that had run away. Now there's a conversation about God and the flying lizard. The narrator in the Carvalho did a discussion about the existence of God and the static form of the flying lizard. They argued that the flying lizard is a representative of a form of life which existed even uh, several millions of years ago. During the long period of evolution, everything underwent a change. The reptiles grew wings, became birds, monkeys came near the near down the to earth, became bipeds, became men, met tools, weapons, machines, devised machines, and when all this was happening, why did the flying lizard remain as it, as it was? That was a question. The, the flying lizard and the others like it are capsules of time, holding within the secrets of the universe. Then Carvalho spoke about the evolution theory of gorilla and chimpanzee. So now, now we are moving to the third morning in the forest, the third day in the forest here. Yankita skill. So here, when they woke up the next morning, there was a thick mist. And after some time, Yankita came with a snake in his hand. Carvalho was amazed to see the snake being skinned alive and witnessed Yankata's skill. Then they reached a small pond. After crossing the rough path, they reached a small pond. They unyoked the bullocks. Prabhakara started listening some Hindi songs over his, trans over his transistor radio. Then a big ant hill. The narrator sat for a while and suddenly heard a continuous tap, tap, drip drip sound as of raindrops falling on dry leaves it was ants falling off on dry leaves he looked up and saw that on the branch of a tree there was a big ant hill but so were there on the other branches also some creatures had entered the ant hill and was gobbling up the ants and ran out like a stream Later, the bees increased in number, but the creature neither stopped devouring nor ran away when it could no longer stand on onrush of the ants. It leaped. It leaped, floated in the air, leaped means jumped, floated in the air, landed on the trunk of a big tree, then started moving up. So this is a hint of the flying lizard here okay now there's a brown colored flying lizard the narrator said that the creature was the brown colored flying lizard 
this was a reptile which had evoked in them numberless thoughts and the dreams open eyed the narrator saw that representatives of the great reptiles which once ruled the earth it was a huge tree and the narrator huge tree then and it and the lizard looked very small it was still busy the lizard was eating the ends that had got stuck to its body its wings which looked like white blown up form which is now invisible the moment it landed its form and features were exactly like the one drawn according to the description of mandana to carvalho its color was indistinguishable from the color of the bark of the tree it started going up but the narrator did not take his eyes off and he started calling mandana prabhakar carvalho and shouted that it's climb up the tree he shouted it's climb up the tree please come fast the narrator fixed his eyes on the lizard in the meantime the flying lizard with measured speed was climbing up the tree he was determined not to lose that glimpse of the timeless which a divine moment had allowed him to have in time then kariyappa and mandana came it disturbed his concentration <clears throat> the narrator mentioned that the lizard entered the ant hill and was eating away the ants when too many of them surrounded it it moved over there then carvalho started to describe the flying lizard by asking mandana and he said can you just see there's a scaly saw like skin over its head and neck the tail goes up to the back it has its legs it has its feet which has nails it's put it puts out its tongue the tongue is like ours then carvalho confirmed that the narrator was looking at the right flying lizard now prabhakara he is getting his camera ready prabhakar could not see anything with the binoculars so the flying lizard because the flying lizard began moving up where the narrator saw a green patch of moss carvalho instructed prabhakar to keep the movie camera ready and put the tele lens focus on that part of the moss so carvalho took the binoculars and prabhakara tried to observe through the camera mandana confirmed that it is a flying lizard which has no wings but it flies carvalho could not see its wings prabhakar's camera made kar sound without taking his eye off the camera hole i off the camera hole prabhakar press its button the flying lizard crossed the green patch got merged with the color of the bark of the tree they all bent down massaged the backs of the knee the necks then mandana was told to be vigilant of anything which falls even if it was only a leaf carvalho said i don't know how much we have seen and how much we have missed so now there are a lot of efforts to which are the efforts to fly to catch this flying lizard so what happened kariyappa mandana carvalho prabhakara they all let down the ground to keep a better watch over the tree so mandana and yankata they made a big fire under the tree and the thick dark dark clouds rose up just like dark mountains mandana was standing on the top of the hillock nearby then kariyappa shouted it has flown away it has run away or flown away it was observed by kariyappa and mandana that the flying lizard landed on the tree kariyappa began climbing the tree now the next moment the narrator saw a tiny four legged creature floating in the air it whizzed past a tree and landed on the trunk of another near its ribs thin white wings appeared and disappeared it amazed the narrator that it did not fold its wings like the birds nor did it gather them 
along with its legs like the bats. So Mandana, Karvalo and Kiwi, they all rushed towards the tree. Now the flying lizard has seen here two different conditions. Since the flying lizard could not flap its wings and fly, so it had to climb and reach some height before taking to flight. Again, because of the thick cloud of the smoke, it was moving towards the top of the hill where the trees were short and stubby. Yankata and Kariyappa were chasing it from tree to tree and its climbs and speed were getting noticeably affected. Suddenly, the flying lizard flew past them, landed on the trunk of a nearby timber tree. Now, Kariyappa plays an important role here. Kariyappa ran and started climbing the tree. It was hardly two arm lengths away from him, hardly two, arm, two arms le le length away. The flying lizard tried to escape from Kariyappa's hands, slipped away a little and Kariyappa grabbed it by its tail. Everyone stunned having seen this and they just rooted to the ground. Prabhakar's movie camera was making the kar sound. Karipa was in a fix, he was in a confusion because with one arm he was holding onto the tree and with the other arm he was holding the tail of the flying lizard. So Yankata began climbing the tree. The flying lizard tugged fiercely at Kariyapa's hand. Once when he tried to pull it near his palm, it hissed. The, the flying lizard hissed just like a snake and from near its hood, close to the ear, its skin got extended like an umbrella. Karepa was frightened. It hissed again and the wings disappeared near its ribs. So Karepa was waiting for Yankata because Karepa's palms were sweating and he could not hold it for a long time. He was losing the grip. So finally, Yankata reached him. Finally, Yankata reached him and its tail got cut. It climbed up past. Karepa followed it, but the flying lizard raced, ran away, releasing its wings, flew and landed on a heap of boulders. On the top of the hill, Yankata and Karyapa were still on the tree and the others were down, helplessly watching. The flying lizard kept lap the flying lizard kept leaping, jumping from one boulder to another boulder, reached the top of the promontory. Promontory means to say the highest peak of a rock. Then Following the blind, the flying lizard, they all reached to the very edge of the Sayadri range. The other side was sheer drop of several thousand feet. Forest and smell, small river below could be seen. The rock was slippery and the dew and the moss added to the risk. But Yankata and Kariyapa slowly started sliding up the precipice. Precipice means to say a very steep side of a mountain. Then finally, what happens finally? The flying lizard who is frightened, it hissed and spread its hood and looked back whether it could move backwards. Then it looked forward. Kariyapa and Yankata moved two more arm lengths up. Again it hissed and did what they had least expected to do. Then the flying lizard jumped from the edge of the precipice. Like a miracle, near its ripped thin, white wings sprouted. Suddenly white wings came out. It zoomed into the vague, unending blue space. And since it could not beat its wings, and change the course. It fell, the flying lizard fell straight into the water and in a little while the strange flying lizard vanished 
into the space. So none of them, none of them felt disappointed. A link from the past had flashed past their eyes like an, like an apocalypse. Then it just vanished. So let's go to the conclusion of the story here. The expedition, like all true expeditions, is a failure as well as a success. They could not catch the flying lizard, but at least they could touch and they could witness. So it was failure come success. The flying lizard escapes, but expeditions have succeeded, succeeded in understanding in an important way of evolution, evolution of the universe. How does the universe evol evolution happen? Hence, Purna Chandra Tejasvi's Karvalo presents many worlds. It presents a dream world, the world of science and mystery. It presents a world of normal, simple human beings. So all these are yoked together to the animal world through Kiwi, the narrator's golden spaniel, through the born climber up trees, biryani kariyappa, the world of vegetation becomes an integral part of the story. So dear friends, I have written this summary from the source, from the source, the translation by D.A. Shankar. I have referred this book, then I have written this summary and the whole, the courtesy goes to the translated version by D.A. Shankar. Thank you so much for watching. Dear friends, thank you so much for watching this video. You can reach me at mukeshenglish at the rate of gmail.com. Please do subscribe the channel. Click on the like button for more videos on literature, workbook, pronunciation, grammar, communication skills, presentation skills, interview skills. Stay in tune with Mukesh English. Thank you once again.